Hello, good morning and welcome to St Michael's Oamoin for morning prayer on Thursday the 10th of January. It's a commemoration of William Lord and otherwise we'll be using the common worship daily prayer seasonal provision for Epiphany which you'll find at the beginning of the Red Book if that's where you're following of the prayer during the day, morning and evening prayer, ordinary time, morning and evening the seasons, open with Advent, Christmas and then Epiphany. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the nations, and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations, to you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. A song of joy. Oh, be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on a fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. <coughs> so we turn to the back of the Red Book for our Psalms, or to scroll down, for 97 and 149. 97 and 149, the appointed psalmody. Today we open and close each with a refrain as provided saying the glory be before we repeat at the last and use the prayers that follow in silence if we choose. Psalms 97 and 149. You, Lord, are most high over all the earth. The Lord is king, let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings lit up the world. The earth saw it and trembled. The mountains melted like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declared his righteousness, and all the peoples have seen his glory. <clears throat> Confounded be all who worship, carved images, and delight in mere idols. Bow down before him, all you gods. Zion heard and was glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoiced because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of his faithful and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joy for the true of heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. You, Lord, are most high over all the earth.
and praises to the Lord all the earth. Alleluia. O sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and lyre. For the Lord has pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with salvation. Let the faithful be joyful in glory. Let them rejoice in their ranks with the praises of God in their mouths and a two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings in chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, <clears throat> to execute on them the judgment decreed. Such honour have all his faithful servants. Alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. say back to the canticle in morning prayer during Epiphany, a song of the New Jerusalem. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. Arise, shine out, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Though night still covers the earth, and darkness the peoples. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. The nations will come to your light, and kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will lie open continually. Shut neither by day nor by night. The sound of violence shall be heard no longer in your land, or ruin and devastation within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. No more will the sun give you daylight, nor moonlight shine upon you. But the Lord will be your everlasting light. Your God will be your splendour. For you shall be called the city of God, the dwelling of the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. William Lord was appointed Archbishop of Canterbury by his friend and ecclesiastical ally Charles I in 1633. The aim of both Archbishop and Monarch was to counter the reforming Puritan movement, which emphasised personal and ecclesial austerity as a means of sustaining conversion. Lord was a high churchman who felt that the majesty of God should be reflected in the liturgy of the church and rigorously set about ensuring that its ministers should practise what he preached. His relentless approach left no room for variance of practice. But neither did the Puritans, and the latter had the upper hand in Parliament, and eventually impeached him in 1640 and imprisoned him in the Tower of London. His friend the King did not or could not come to his assistance, and he was beheaded on this day in the year 1645. <coughs> so to our first Bible reading, Isaiah 65 from 17. Chapter 65 of Isaiah from 17. For I am about to create new heavens and new earth, and for the former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit, and shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labour in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be for for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. <clears throat> Towards the end of the third section of Isaiah, <coughs> opening first part of Isaiah written by an individual before the exile, the second by a group in his name, as it were, and 
following his ideas and thoughts, writing during exile, and the third part written by a third group, later still, again, a slightly different style, a slightly different context of the time, as we can see in the things they comment on, um, end of exile, early restoration, <clears throat> and bringing a voice as of God to bring hope to those who had, however, as an oppressed minority, been living um, amongst, or even if as an oppressed minority, had been living in, if you like, um, polite society provided for by the rivers that flowed and kept the land irrigated, fed by easy trade from overseas, access to cosmopolitan mix of religion and ethnicity, <coughs> and uh, they were restored by the next city-state empire and uh, restored <coughs> back to Jerusalem and the land that God had given them, which had become, had declined after the population had been removed. And so it was effectively like a wilderness once again. And so those that were in favour of this restoration wrote um, books that have become part of scripture, which speak of new starts and Jews since and Christians likewise and others who read this book apply the encouragement to their own circumstance. And there are those Christians who are concerned about the winding up of all things, eschatological interest, and this would appeal to them because it begins for I'm about to create new heavens and new earth. However it ends, the wolf and the lamb shall feed together and the lion eats straw like the ox. And if we take both of those passages together, we realise that there's a certain amount of hyperbole or overemphasis to catch ears, to make dramatic point, just like people show us adverts to let us know how um, poor we are, how much we need the thing that they're presenting, so they show how much more the, uh, the person the advert has than we have in their lives, how much more fulfilled they are because they've got the product that has been presented and it's a similar sort of marketing, if you like, strategy using um, expressions and ideas that are over the odds to arrest and challenge and to catch, um, to provoke thought and response and reaction. This business of building houses and inhabit and vineyards and eat their fruit because if you are uh, agricultural <coughs> Uh, tribe and you grow things on land you need to still be on that land to literally reap the harvest of what you have sown and uh, that was always Israel's problem that the Philistines and other marauding Bedouin pastoralist Arab tribes would just pass through and nick what they were expecting to be able to harvest and uh, particularly if you're taken into exile I guess it was something they lamented as they saw their crops standing in the fields that they had to leave behind, their animals left standing such as they had them in the fields and they had to be left behind. So the new heavens and new earth may be an expression that means that there will be an entirely new cosmos at some stage or it may, like the lion and the lamb, be a thought-provoking exaggeration. <coughs> an example of how new things will be, how equitable things will be. And this will be a joy, and Jerusalem will be created as a joy, and its people a delight. There will no more be weeping. People will live full lives. Youngsters won't die young. There will be no hurting or destruction on God's holy mountain. So we pray that that will be the case as we pray for Jerusalem, all the different ethnicities, religions, and schools of thought within those religions that vie for a place. We pray for our government that we do not renege on our responsibilities, having been in charge of Palestine before the Jewish state as it now is, the state of Israel was established. <coughs> and we pray that the international community will stand up to unilateral attempts to recreate Jerusalem as the capital <coughs> and the international agreements to maintain parity will stand just as they did in Berlin after the Second World War until the situation changed that it was for the good of all including the citizens of that place that the situation was moved on so to 1 John 5 from 13 our second reading not the Gospel of John but the letters further on a small group of short writings bearing the name John 1 John 5 from 13 
I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. And this is the boldness we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have obtained requests made of him. If you see your brother or sister committing what is not a mortal sin, you will ask, and God will give life to such a one, to those whose sin is not mortal. If there, <coughs> if there is sin that is mortal. I do not say that you should pray about that. All wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin that is not mortal. We know that those who are born of God do not sin, but the one who is born of God protects them, and the evil one does not touch them. We know that we are God's children, and that the whole world lies under the power of the evil one. We know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding, so that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. <clears throat> and so this passage opens with an exhortation that we may know that or the date the people to whom this was written and we as we read it ourselves may know that we have eternal life. And there are two reasons given for that. One is that we are given that for which we ask. And if we ask, therefore, for forgiveness for our brothers or sisters committing what is not a mortal sin, it will be forgiven them. <clears throat> I'm not quite sure what this mortal sin is and what this division is between a lesser and greater sin. Maybe that the certain sins cause death to the person there and then one wonders whether there is no forgiveness for those sins or whether we have to rely on the grace and mercy of God and we are not able to pray for forgiveness for those sins for other people but nevertheless as we move on to the second paragraph having been told that we can pray for forgiveness and that will come as long as the sin isn't mortal the second passage speaks of how God protects those born of God. <clears throat> those who are born of God do not sin, but the one who was born of the one who was born of God protects them. So that may be we who are followers, according to this writer, do not sin, but the one who was born of God, I guess that's Jesus, protects them, and the evil one does not touch them very much. A polar understanding of theology where the evil one, the personification of evil, a relatively new development in the Greek scripture, the New Testament, that evil is personified and that bad things don't come from God Almighty, the God of Abraham, <coughs> the Lord of hosts, as bad things do. They are the source of bad, God is the source of bad things in the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament. But in the Greek New Testament, the devil is responsible for all that is bad and Jesus and God, the Spirit, are responsible for all that is good. But um, that line, those who are born of God do not sin, is challenging. <clears throat> One wonders whether they felt that there was a need for regular, continual confession and humility. That may or may not be what is meant there. <clears throat> Maybe it's meant that they do not commit mortal sin. I don't know. But it's a very strong and bold statement, and one that I wouldn't necessarily agree with, knowing that I am born of God and knowing that I do sin. But then the passage concludes, we know the Son of God has come to give us understanding that we know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Great exhortation of truth and doctrine. As I say, it's written fairly soon after that line, those born of God do not sin. <coughs> so I could be accused of choosing my texts to suit my purpose. But I have to say those the other lines are very encouraging. We are in him who is true. And may we live with the strength, courage, boldness of that truth. Live in that this day that we may witness and testify to it and bring truth into our circumstances with grace and mercy. And the closing line, little children, keep yourselves from idols. So to the responsory, then back in morning prayer during Epiphany. 
O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is king. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tell out his salvation from day to day, let the whole earth tremble before him. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, let the whole earth tremble before him. To the song of Zechariah. This is the Christ, the chosen of God, the one who will bring healing to the nations. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. This is the Christ, the chosen of God, the one who will bring healing to the nations. Let us pray. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for bringing us to the beginning of this day. And we thank you for all that lies ahead of us in it. <coughs> and we recognise that it is a new day that we have a fresh start as ever and always in you. And we pray that you will restore us to that which is ours, those parts of ourselves which we have had hindered and broken, that those roles and jobs and duties, those parts of our lives that we are aiming for and yearning for, that we have ambition for, that we need, that we'd like to be restored to, may we have faith and guidance and hope in your direction and provision that we may move towards that today just as your people were restored to their land in our first reading and we pray that we may pray for forgiveness in the full knowledge that that is our due and that you will hear and answer our prayers as we pray that others may be set free and may we walk in the sure and certain knowledge of your truth and not bow to idols and draw others to that truth, giving them a firm foundation for life, for decision-making, that they will not find their harvest reaped by others through lies, falsehood and misunderstanding. From Operation World, <coughs> We thank you for the globalisation of the Great Commission movement, which has profoundly changed the face of mission. There's been a huge surge of interest and involvement in missions from the majority world. <coughs> mission sending has gained or maintained momentum in Ethiopia, Nigeria, Brazil, Philippines, South Korea and others. We pray a blessing on the organisations that send, the people who go, the organisations that support. Those nations and peoples that receive the message through those that are sent. <coughs> we pray for partnerships between the majority world church, missionary sending agencies, the old world churches and missionary sending agencies and to do the organisations where the people arrive and the churches and the work that is already happening there that missionaries may support and encourage and enable with humility and we pray a blessing on new methods <coughs> short term 
the use of social media. Meeting with people who have moved from home to work, reaching those on holidays, assisting those in need through war and famine. And we pray that where there is disruption, there will be openness and that the church will serve with humility and grace both the physical and faith needs of those amongst whom we work. <coughs> Christian Action Research and Education. We pray about abortion lobbyists steady campaign to make abortion easier using nurses, pharmacists and internet suppliers and removing legal restrictions like the government's decision to permit women to take the second abortion pill at home. That Christian Action Research and Education's view, I think, is that abortion ought not to be available at all. My own view is that there should be a balance between needs and rights of the mother, the unborn, the husband, the father. And a recognition that the termination of the child's life will have an effect on emotional and other physical potential development and relationship throughout life and so should not be taken lightly as if these things ever are they may be but and so we do pray for adequate control and support throughout the process of the decision to terminate for whatever reason and through that experience and beyond <coughs> and that only move to isolate people acting on that decision will be prevented for the well-being of both well I guess for the dying child but also for the the parents from Green Christian Once I can find today's entry, Tony Junior from the Ecologist outlines three major factors that, that cause the destruction of biodiversity our food system, land use and fragmentation, where roads and airports and the like divide land, also hedges and fences and so on. All this is an assault on the fabric of living systems. It's basically the price of progress. We need to keep prices down to increase our competitiveness, but you can't do business in a planet that's in chaos. <coughs> Pray for an increased understanding and awareness of our need to work within the confines of the, or the physical constraints of the world, the globe, <coughs> its environment, its atmosphere, as that, as climate changes, May we be restored to small scale, locally accountable, mixed farming. And within our means, and we pray that changes in our um, legal structures in this country in relation to farming and our relationship with buying and selling food in Europe and elsewhere will contribute to and not detract from our ability to live and farm in an increasingly benign way. And we pray that the message that people are trying to put out, that this is a crisis and that it needs to be addressed by our communities, will get their message across and will not simply be overwhelmed by media coverage of their methods that media and communities will pick up their message and as we talked about the prophets be challenged by the message presented by the method and in our benefit cycle of prayer which I newly updated yesterday we give thanks for our parish's covenant with the broad main Methodists and we pray Blessings on all that we share together.
pray for our people, praying for Robin, Jan, Chris, Margaret, Fred, Madeline, Joyce, Terry and Elena, Jane, Hugh, Edward and Timothy, Stuart and Vicky, Julia, Des, Paul and Valerie, Brenda, Doris, Liz, Betty, Ben and Carol. That's half the membership in Broad, Maine. Pray your blessings of health, wealth and prosperity, salvation and healing and deliverance on them, those that are finding life a struggle, that you will hear and answer their prayers, that they will know your presence and your hope, whether they are struggling with poverty or illness, <coughs> recovery, relationship. We pray for those for whom life is going well, that they will be able to share with those in need around and about them. And we pray that we will all be drawn onwards and upwards into fuller experience and understanding of faith, that you will make us who you would have us be, as the author and perfecter of our faith. May we be inspired and motivated to pray, serve, study, and that as we that energy is seen in us, that people will be drawn to you, and that we will be seen to be improving as people, and be more compelling and attractive in ourselves, in our attitudes, and in our ways in the world, in our dealings with others. With our dependability, our faithfulness, our truth, that that would be seen as a good thing, especially by the poor and the oppressed, the hurting, the broken, that you would build your kingdom in and through us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shabram Hasam Shasih Mati or Mosh Masam Shakasin, Hilip Aslo Shashuram Hasashan Yasikim Hasbach Yamason Osaram. Pray with Shasim, and his name is Shasukaram, but your best better than he has on Masakaraba, which has any seven bits of Nasakora Mayaka. Chaps and the Hemis Mishunasam Shimmerim about, and the Ashakan takes my habit as Mavos or your court. Chimnis Pemisim Yahana Sakan and Mish Pesemish Kidian and Ishma Joson Kum for saying Yan is the Messiah. Я просто нафас на нас, 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 Almighty God in Christ, you make all things new, transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace and the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Believing the promises of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ who sends us to the nations give us the power of his spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.